In this video, I will introduce you to concepts related to spatial analysis. In GIS, spatial analysis refers to the techniques to examine spatial data in ways that reveal patterns and relationships across geographic space. Why is spatial analysis so powerful? First, it allows you to visualize data in a way that is easy to understand. Second, it allows you to measure the spatial relationships between different features. Third, it allows you to test hypotheses about your data, as well as share your findings with others. In the previous video, I covered concepts related to spatial relationships. This video will deal with spatial analyses related to those concepts that I introduced, including pattern identification, proximity analysis, overlay analysis, network analysis, interpolation analysis, spatiotemporal analysis, and surface analysis. Again, the purpose of this video is to introduce the terms to you, and then we will see them in greater detail in future videos. We'll begin with pattern identification. It should be no surprise to learn that pattern identification is all about identifying and analyzing spatial patterns. It is one of the core spatial analyses that we do in GIS. Through pattern identification, we can recognize clusters, linear patterns, dispersed distributions of features in a given space. Proximity analysis allows us to understand how different features relate to each other in geographic space. It involves examining the spatial relationships and distances between features. It can help answer questions like, where are all the schools within one mile of my house? What parks are within five miles of a bus stop? What are the hospitals within 10 miles of a fire station? Overlay analysis is another fundamental spatial analysis technique. In it, we combine and analyze multiple layers of geographic data to derive new information. For example, take this image which shows a portion of the city of Davenport, Iowa along the Mississippi River. As a planner in Davenport, you might be interested in understanding if there are buildings that are susceptible to river flooding. You might have a layer that is the buildings of Davenport. You might also have a layer that shows areas that could be inundated during a flood. Through overlay analysis, we can identify those buildings that could be affected by flooding. And here we see an output layer, which is just those buildings. Network analysis is a type of spatial analysis that allows you to analyze the movement of people, goods, or information through a network. Networks can be anything from road networks to water networks to railroad networks to social networks. Through network analysis, we can answer questions like, what is the shortest route between two points? What is the most efficient way to deliver goods to a set of customers? What is the best way to route a bus through a city? What is the most likely path that a disease will spread through a population? When we do spatial interpolation, we estimate values at unmeasured locations using known values from nearby locations. Here we have in our image a series of points that exist in geographic space. The green points are locations where we have measured values. The red points are the ones that we may be interested in estimating what would be the value there. It could be a pollution level, it could be a temperature, it could be crop yields in a farm, whatever. With interpolation, what we do is we use these known values and then use them to determine what locations in between those values might have. There are several spatial interpolation techniques and some common ones that you will use frequently in GIS. Spatial temporal analysis is another common spatial analysis technique. We use it to understand and visualize how spatial relationships and patterns change over time. Here we have an animation showing urban growth in Las Vegas, Nevada. By examining spatial data over time, it helps us understand patterns that might not be evident from a purely spatial or purely temporal perspective. 
Finally, there are surface analyses, which deal with Earth's surface. We use properties like elevation, slope, aspect, and others to understand phenomena. This is particularly useful in fields like hydrology and agriculture and urban planning. For example, if you're in an area with steep slope that is normally dry, like what we have in our image here, and then we have a large rain event that could create landslides, and landslides would occur in the direction of the slope, the aspect of the slope. So if you were downhill from a slope, you might be affected. This was just a quick introduction to terms related to spatial analysis, just like the previous video was a quick introduction into terms related to spatial relationships. We will see many of these terms again as we dive a little bit deeper into the analysis techniques that we can use in GIS.